And filling in for Rick Gibbons this afternoon, I'm Patricia Bowl. Of course, you heard Rick earlier, but uh, he is tied up at Food Aid this afternoon. Incredible day they had there. And I'm joined as co-host this afternoon through this hour and through afternoon edition as well, which follows by CTV's Michael O'Byrne. Fresh off doing the noon news. It's a busy day for you, Michael. It's been a busy morning, but a great morning. It's a fantastic day in the capital. The sun is shining. We had a great time down at Food Aid Day, and we're going to talk about that a little later in the day. But we have a really interesting topic to bring you right now. Absolutely. Well, Leanne Cusack was having a great time at Food Aid. And, oh, she uh, was. And we're going to tell you what happened with CTV's Katie Griffin a little bit later as well. But yes, as you mentioned, we're joined by two guests in studio uh, to talk about uh, a special anniversary for Live, Work, Play. And we're joined by Keenan Weller, the co-leader and director of communications at Live, Work, Play, and Al Condolucci, the CEO of Community Living and Support Services. Very happy to have you both here with us. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, hey, Keenan, can we start with you? Can you give us a sense of what Live, Work, Play is all about? Sure. Well, it's about uh, supporting people with intellectual disabilities and also helping our community welcome them to live, work, and play as valued citizens. So like the rest of us, uh, a great home to live in, a great job, and friends and fun things to do with those friends. So what happens tonight? What's the, what's the big event? What will be happening? Well, it is our 20th anniversary and uh, so it's a series of uh, recognition ceremonies. Uh, Al will be speaking. There's a couple of uh, surprises arranged, and we'll be uh, celebrating some uh, treasured memories with a uh, video and photo and uh, performance-style events. Al, you're an author. Uh, you've been at this for a long time. Why is an event like this important? Uh, Michael, this is, uh, you know, this is celebrations uh, like this are, are, are important ceremonies for uh, relationships and relationship building. And, and um, my topic is really going to be um, tonight talking a little bit about how important relationships are in our lives. And sociologists call this social capital. And it's been the area of my academic study and also my practical work uh, in my hometown of Pittsburgh. Had an opportunity to meet Keenan and Julie and the good p folks from Live, Work, Play um, at a conference a number of years ago. And, and their philosophy was really, really consistent and intersected with the philosophy behind social capital. So I'm really excited to be here tonight for the celebration. How did this all get started, Live, Work, Play, some, some 20 years ago, Keenan? Uh, partly, uh, I made a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a that, good that mistake. happens on a lot of uh, career paths, right? <laughs> like a lot of uh, young first-year university students, I was looking for uh, employment, and I misread an employment advertisement. Uh, to work with people with developmental challenges, and I, I didn't know what that meant. I thought it was actually for uh, kids from underprivileged uh, families, and uh, it wasn't, uh, but I got the job, and I found out quickly it was actually about working with people with autism and Down syndrome and uh, other disability labels, and uh, what I found out is uh, the reason I never met any of these people before in my own community is that they've been hidden away from me in, in different schools, and they go to different places, and uh, they don't go to my workplaces or where I hang out or where I play sports. And uh, that really bothered me. And so it was a few years later, until uh, 1995, this was in 1989, but it took a while. But uh, when I met uh, my future wife, Julie, and we put our heads together on this problem and uh, ended up founding the organization, and uh, it's 20 years now. Uh, Al, sorry, go ahead, Patricia. Uh, I'm just going to say, if you can tell us a little bit about your book, which uh, this is your seventh book that you've written that deals with some of these these same issues that Keenan's talking yeah, about. Yeah, Patricia. We, we, um, uh, I've been you know fascinated, obviously, and challenged by the very same things that uh, Keenan articulated, and that is that um, historically and still today, people with disabilities, whether those disabilities are congenital from birth or whether they're acquired later in life, end up losing relationships. They become more and more isolated. And, and um, uh, the, the, the potency of bad things that can happen when people are isolated um, is a huge, huge problem and so, uh, in my own path, uh, when I when I began to get introduced to the to what social capital can do and what relationships do do in our lives, mm -hmm. it really became um, a philosophical sort of um, platform in which to really look at how might we support people not in ways that help them with their disability, but in ways that get people connected to other other folks. And so, uh, I've been writing and speaking and practicing and teaching. On these principles for a lot of years. I'm really interested in this whole concept of social capital. K 
Can you tell us in simple terms what it means and how it relates to what the folks at Live, Work, Play do? Yeah. Uh, Michael, it's, uh, it, the phrase social capital is really a combination of the fact that our, our relationships, our social world, is valuable. Capital is the, sort of the term we put when something is, is valued. So um, uh, we know just generally that, that, that people, through their relationships, um, are healthier, they're happier, they live longer, they achieve more, they advance more. Test scores have, have now been very conclusive that kids do better who are connected mm -hmm. with other kids than kids who are isolated. How that relates to live, work, play, and, and the work that I do uh, with my own organization class is that if all these benchmarks actually go up, I mean, all the important things of life, health, happiness, longevity, if they go up based on relationships, and if we know people who have disabilities have less relationships, then connecting the dots uh, becomes a key element to help people's lives get better. Very interesting. Talking about targeting isolation, really, that's, that's I guess, one of the side effects of, of living with developmental disabilities is that being isolated, being disconnected from community and from society, and that's all these, all these efforts try to deal with that. Yeah, it's almost actually a side effect of the way we try to solve the problem. Like I mm -hmm. think I was trying to explain, it's a micro-macro perspective. So in the micro, we would look at the person as the problem and how to fix it. And the more of the macro perspective is, well, why are they excluded? And what can we change about um, our community so that they're more welcomed? And so it's been a process, especially over the last seven or eight years, we've changed a lot of what we do at Live, Work, Play based in large measure on uh, Al's teachings uh, to spend more time looking outward to our community and people who are more than, Ottawa is a wonderful place uh, to connect with people, whether it's employers um, or just people that want to share a hobby. And it's working really well. And so it's changing people's social capital and is leading to everything that I was talking about, all those indicators of how they feel uh, is going up. Keenan, tonight is a celebration of 20 years. Isolation is a key word in this whole conversation. How much has changed in the last 20 years? How much better off are we? Well, we're starting to have these conversations where uh, the things that I was saying are no longer sort of a fringe of, uh, around our sector, and they're active daily conversations that we need to support people differently. We know this works, and so how do we shift our systems and structures uh, that are invested in kind of a different way of doing things uh, and, and make this the way? Michael, if I could just add to Keenan's point is really spot on, but just adding to it over the last 20-year window, um, people 20 years ago were institutionalized at the drop of a hat, mm -hmm. actually set, set apart from communities, segregated. Over the last 20 years, we've helped people move from institutions into community, but people, the real bottom line of social capital is not just being in a community, it's really being of a community. And there's a huge difference between somebody just sitting in the back of the church and somebody being of that congregation and, and involved in other things that happen in that congregation. So I think we've made great strides getting people out of these large uh, places and into the community, but now we're working on getting people of the community. And tonight, of course, will be all about community and being social. Sold out event at St. Anthony's Banquet Hall tonight. More than 350 guests will be there celebrate some of the progress made over the last 20 years. We want to thank both of you for being here. Keenan Weller, the co-leader and director of communications at Live, Work, Play, and the keynote speaker tonight, Al Condolucci, the CEO of Community Living and Support Services. Thank you both for coming in. Thanks.